The Entrepreneur's Library, episode 94. Welcome to the Entrepreneur's Library, the only book-centric podcast that reviews all the top-selling business books and shares authors' perspective firsthand. This is your resource to finding the next great book that will enable you to grow personally and professionally. Welcome your host, Wade Danielson. Thank you for joining us on the Entrepreneur's Library. Today we have Stephen Feiner, author of The Art of Resignation, Quit Without Burning Bridges. Welcome, Stephen, and thank you for joining us on the Entrepreneur's Library. Hi, Wade. Th- thanks so much. Really, really excited to be here. Absolutely. Before we jump into the book, will you tell us just a little bit about you personally? Absolutely. Yeah. So um, right now, it's um, a Saturday morning in Singapore. Um, but before I, I moved abroad to Singapore, um, I originally from New York, um, started working in consulting in Chicago. Um, decided to move and work for for Google um, in San Francisco and then Singapore. Um, so I've lived in uh, now six different cities, I believe, um, and have been to just about 40 countries. And I'm really excited to, to share a little bit of what I've learned over those experiences with, with you guys here today. Excellent. So thank you for sharing that first off. And now let's jump right into your book, The Art of Resignation which was just made available for purchase November 5th, 2014. And see, we're going to move quickly, but we're really our whole goal is to cover the top questions that our listener slash, slash reader wants to get answered. And the first one is, what was the inspiration behind writing The Art of Resignation? Yeah, I, I, absolutely. So I, I think this dovetails pretty nicely with, with my background. So um, coming out of college, my, my first job was for IBM. And my parents were very proud of me. It was a blue chip company and everybody knew the name IBM, except there was one small problem. Um, I I was really interested in doing strategic consulting, management consulting. So two months into my first job coming out of school that my parents were so super excited about, um, I decided to quit in favor of a better job offer. Um, And having this conversation with my loved ones, people I had come across, uh, didn't seem to be going over too well. And I realized there was so much stress involved in this resignation. It was so difficult to me. I, I didn't want to, as uh, a good friend put it, ruin my career prospects just by really doing what I, I thought was the right decision. Um, so I, after I, I quit IBM, I, I moved on to a firm called LEK Consulting. And from there, I, I, I did consulting for Fortune 500 companies and private equity funds. And I, I eventually got recruited away to a startup. And as I was leaving consulting, I, I realized I, I, I enjoyed my time there. And I, I, I didn't really want to just leave my coworkers. I, I wanted the option to be able to come back to my consulting firm should the startup fail. Or um, I certainly wanted to be able to reach out and have everybody return my calls. and the, the normal way that people quit in consulting is you get completely burned out and you almost have a nervous breakdown. So I, I, I saw coworkers cry and curse um, and I realized there, there really needed to be a better answer. So I, I did a lot of research. I, I figured out how best to do the perfect resignation, uh, one that, that takes the stress out of it and, and one that, that really allows you to... Um, cherish the relationships that you have and keep the bridges intact. And that theme just kept on following me throughout my career. And as my friends uh, would find out about my my experiences um, with with resigning, they'd always ask me questions and ask me for advice. And when I started to realize that my my advice was helping out my friends, I I, I knew there there needed to be something here. Um, So that's roughly what what led me to this. this. It, It was just a passion project that um, so far, has been able to help a, a lot of my my good friends and um, me alleviate some stress in my in our in our resignations. So I actually don't know the, the next question. I'm going to ask you anyway um, because I think it's of extreme value. I personally have not read or seen another book out on the same topic. But what makes your book different from others regarding the same or similar topic? Right. Absolutely. Um, Right. So it, it's not just another leadership book or a negotiation book. Um, so for me, resignation is much more than just a letter. Um, so I, I, I looked out there and there, there really wasn't anything 
um, that, that I thought was a particularly good advice. Um, sure, you can download a script or um, an email template and press send, but you spend years working at a job. Doesn't that doesn't that feel tacky almost? Um, shouldn't you spend a little bit more effort just to to make it classy, to to make sure that your coworkers know you you actually value their contributions, and um, despite the fact that you might be moving on um, to a startup or to, to anything else, um, you you really enjoyed working with them. So um, Wade, you mentioned. Um, uh, before we, we got on the air, um, that there are 1.5 million books that come out every year. Um, well, that's a lot of books, but this is completely uncharted territory that I, I think people really, um, well, uh, aren't necessarily aware that they, they need. But um, if if 80% of the jobs are, are unlisted, then resignation and, and handling and, and cherishing these connections that, that, that's got to be more valuable than just reading the top 100 interview questions or um, my personal favorite book, um, at, at least now that I work at Google, is are you smart enough to work at Google? Um, because unfortunately, the answer is no, I'm not smart enough to do the, the interview questions in, in the book. But um, I, I, I guess hopefully it, it was um, a, a good challenge to, to be able to um, write the, the book that, that answered a very serious question in my career. So this next question is a little bit different. The fact that we're really asking just how do you want it, the, the reader, the, the average reader that picks up your book, how do you want them to engage with it? Is this something they can jump in and cherry pick information, jump back out? Or is this really a start at the beginning and read all the way through type of book? No, it, cherry pick is great. Um, so yeah, I'll go into a lot more of the structure in, in, in just a bit, but, um, it, it really presents the full life cycle. We, we give you a framework to how you address your, your resignation and we walk you through. So if you're not sure if you're ready or um, you're interested in the psychology behind quitting or what are my coworkers thinking, or you really want to know about logistics of quitting in person versus the phone versus a, another medium, um, read that specific chapter. It's, it, it, if you want to read it cover to cover, um, I, I would highly endorse that as well. But really, just the information is there for you to take, absorb, and use. So, Steve, we're to my favorite part of the entire interview. And this is where I'm going to hand over the mic and just really ask that you take a deep dive into your book. Really let this you know, future reader that's listening right now uh, know what they're going to get their, uh, I guess, know what they're going to get their hands on. Will you do that for us? Absolutely. Uh, so... The book is called The Art of Resignation, Quit Without Burning Bridges. And as I was mentioning before, it, it really just presents at a, at a high level a resignation framework, taking you through the full stages of, of resignation. So um, as, as I was alluding to, resignation is just so much more than just a letter. It's so much more than an abrupt meeting in your boss's office saying, hey, look, I quit. It can be done in an artful way, a tactful way, a classy way, and the results uh, tend to be a bit different. So after an introduction to, to myself and my own uh, background, and we, we sort of do the, the forward, which is just a, a brief overview of the book, um, going over timing, logistics, resignation day, um, and just a plea to the, the reader to, to not make the same mistakes. Don't make the same mistakes that that I have, that my friends have, um, learn from our, from our experiences. So chapter one is about when to quit. And it, it kicks off with, if you have ever thought about quitting, believe me, you are not alone. Um, so from there, we, we go through um, the signs that it's time to quit. Um, are you continuously promising yourself that you'll quit? Have you stopped giving your best? And we, we ask the reader to, to go through this checklist and, and really evaluate for themselves um, if, if they're ready. Um, the next section is probably my, my favorite, and it's, um, it's a journaling exercise that um, I, I got from a course on meditation uh, called Search Inside Yourself. And essentially, we, we ask the reader to picture where they'll be in, in five years and just write and just journal. And what they write about their career and what they write about their life in general is just so telling. And it, it, it's very important to 
to picture what, 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 what you're thinking about in the future and where your career is in that, where your career isn't in that. And depending on, on, on what you write and depending on what, what you evaluate in your career, I, I think uh, you are allowed to tap into your psyche to be able to, to answer the question for yourself if you're ready. So next we go into the financial implications of quitting. Um, I, obviously, you won't have a paycheck in your first month. Um, how do you support yourself financially? What about insurance? Um, what about impact on your retirement savings or um, relocation? How long can you survive without income? So the next chapter is the psychology of quitting. So we, we go deep inside the mind of your boss here. So we, we've done countless interviews with Fortune 500 startups. Um, really, we, we've tried to talk to uh, dozens and dozens of bosses to really understand what, what, what goes through their head when, when an employee walks into their office and says, I quit. So we introduced the concept of the, the slow breakup. Uh, essentially, when an, an employee is known to be leaving and um, pens and paper start disappearing off their desk and everybody knows something is happening, but it's just it's this this period before um, when, when when the person is just in, in a limbo phase, they, they haven't quite said that they're resigning yet. Um, so we make uh, the assertion that bosses have feelings too and how best to to address them. Um, so it's not you, it's me. Um, so let your boss know that this decision is about you and your career and reassure your boss. Um, and, and lots of helpful tips like that. There are plenty of fish in the sea, for example, um, to, to help your boss be able to, to find another person um, and just to kill them with kindness, really, um, to make sure y your boss knows uh, that, that this has been a positive experience. And really the, those, those social niceties do wonders in the resignation process. So next we go into the difference in top performers versus average to low performers. Um, and then what are your coworkers thinking? So obviously this is so much more than just what, what your boss is thinking. You, you're gonna get questions. Um, so how do you respond to those? Um, how do you respond to coworkers you're close to versus not close to versus potentially hostile coworkers? Um, by, by addressing all of those different groups, um, it, it's just important to, to, to realize what, what they're thinking, what their motivations might be, um, and to potentially have an answer. Um, next, we go into managing your mindset. And I, I think this is probably one of the most important sections because um, resignation is, is really just a negotiation. And in any negotiation, you always get the best outcomes when it's about the other person and your emotions don't cloud anything. Your emotions are logical, rational, and you know exactly what the outcome you want. Um, so by managing your mindset it's, um, and staying calm, you're, you're able to, to truly change the effects of the negotiation and change the effects of the, the resignation. So we, we do a, a couple helpful suggestions. Um, so for example, positive affirmations um, and just, just saying to yourself, I can do this or having breakfast with a confidant um, the morning before your resignation will just put you in a much better mood and a much better time frame to, to, to have these conversations and the outcomes you'll get will be better. Um, so the next chapter is about timing. So how much notice should you give? Is, is two weeks the gold standard? Um, should it be two months? Uh, it, it, it really depends on, on the industry that you're working, whether it's high turnover, low turnover. Um, can you live, can you leave in the middle of a big project or the busy season? Um, accountants leaving in the middle of tax season, it's, it's probably a great way to, to unfortunately aggravate a, lo a lot of your coworkers. Um, and me as a consultant, um, leaving in the middle of a, a certain case would probably have gone over very, very poorly. Um, we talk about um, leaving if you're in the middle of an employment contract and the potential uh, legal liability the, the, the company might have. For, um, so we, then we answer bonuses, stock options, other financial matters. How does your 401k get affected? What about health insurance, sick days, on use vacation? Um, timing between jobs, can you afford to take time off? The next chapter is all about logistics. So uh, are email resignations ever acceptable? Um, would you ever wanna receive a Dear John breakup email from your significant other? Um, probably not. Um, so we, we always sort of uh, ask the, the reader to, to 
use a, a form of communication that that, that has a, a lot of um, well, it, it's very open. So in person is probably the best form of communication. If that's not available, maybe a video conference. Worst case scenario, maybe a phone call. Um, we talk about confrontation. Um, and it, it's it's an unavoidable element of, of quitting, but but strategies to to hopefully mitigate it. Um, so we talk about time of day is best for handling your resignation, day of week, um, and then just telling people in the office you're quitting before or after. Um, next, it's it's D Day. Um, so there's a picture of um, troops lining up to to go on the shores of Normandy. Um, it's resignation day, the day that it's finally. Uh, arrived. So we give tips on on how to cope with the stress um, and dealing with second thoughts, and just making sure you're you're truly ready. Um, then we talk about what to expect. Um, so in the words of of the Boy Scouts, always be prepared. So knowing what to expect and having answers built in is is just really valuable and will make you more prepared and will will help you get these these better outcomes. Um, so how do you you handle certain certain tactics that your boss might might say to you during the, the resignation process. Maybe he gives you a counteroffer. Maybe you just got a surprise promotion. Maybe you were asked to, to leave immediately if you're, you're going to a competitor. Um, how do you handle all, all these situations? Um, the next chapter is the last few weeks, so during your notice period. Um, so you've already made the decision to quit. You're, you're moving on, whether that, that'd be a startup or uh, whether that's uh, your new job or hell, maybe, maybe you just wanted to, to take a nice vacation. So how do you deal with your, your coworkers after your resignation? So we, we give you a checklist of what you should do um, and what you should not do, um, and then how to deal with, with managers after your resignation. Um, then, then we give some helpful tips for acing the exit interview, and um, just just right off the bat, one of the the best tips I, I can offer is HR is is not to offend anyone who is in HR, just not your friend. Um, HR is a vehicle for the company to prevent any sort of legal retribution, so certainly be careful in in what you share um, and how you share it. I I, I have seen a, a few friends and. Uh, uh, one or two clients we, we've worked with uh, actually get, get burned by, by sharing too much. Um, then we talk about how to handle the goodbye party, um, if there is one, or goodbye luncheon or goodbye breakfast, um, and just um, potential idea, thoughts rudders on toasts or how to leave in a gracious way. After that, you, you've left the company. So we talk about post-resignation contact. We provide a, a helpful framework for, for staying in touch and how to, it, at, we ask the question, is staying in touch selfish? Um, and we go over to easy ways to stay in touch with former coworkers and bosses. So holiday cards or emails, um, articles or books of interest, lunch dates, um, social networking, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, um, dropping in for a visit. It, the, the, the options are, are, are here, just are, are endless, really. Um, just wishing somebody congratulations. Um, just a nice text goes a, a very long way. And 80% uh, of the jobs are, uh, they're, they're not advertised. So by by doing this, by staying in touch with your network, by preserving the bridges, you're you're doing wonders for, for your career. I, I always joke that if um, you increase your career viability by, by 1%, um, maybe by 0.1%. Um, think about how much money you make a year. Is that not worth eight bucks? Um, is that not worth probably significantly more just to, to increase your, your career viability? Hopefully you'll learn something new. So in, in chapter eight, it, it's resigning in special instances. So we, we cover briefly about quitting in different cultures um, and try not to generalize a bit too much. Um, and then the circumstance of congratulations, you might be retiring. How, how do you handle um, some of those those instances as, as you you end your professional career? And then it, just to wrap it up, then we, we, we cover the book up with a nice resignation summary um, with uh, a few tips and tricks. It's, it's your, your cheat list, if you will. Um, so make sure to, to read through that and print it out the day of your resignation and the couple days before. And then we go into examples you can use. So sample resignation letters, email templates, call scripts, um, really just things you can copy and paste and edit and try to um, add a, a helpful touch to. 
there, there are lots of opportunities. How do you respond to um, asking for a letter of recommendation or um, what if your boss is is not as happy with you as, as possible? How, how do you respond to, to those situations or how do you tell your coworkers you're leaving? Um, then, then we talk about coworkers uh, for dealing with coworkers after they know you're quitting. So before and, and after, and then we cover office wide farewell emails. It's the last thing you'll send out to, to the whole office. It's always a nice opportunity to um, be, be gracious and be thankful and earn a lot of points. And then we finally, we, we cover a lot of templates for, for staying in touch. And then that, that, that's roughly it. The, the last page in the book is just a, a note for, for myself, just wishing the, the reader good luck in their experience and um, thanking them so much for, for sharing their journey with me and, and actually just asking the reader to, to reach out if they have any questions. It's uh, steve at artofresignation.com. Um, so we're, we're happy to be a resource for you. And that's about it. So Steve, first off, you did an awesome job of, of taking us through the book. And I was going to ask you, what, what percentage of, of employees do you think actually go through uh, the same or similar process of what you just laid out, you know, or what you, what you teach in the book? <laughs> I, I got to be honest, it's probably single digit percents at best. Yeah. I, you know, we have a sales company and I, I'm thinking about making this a required reading um, <laughs> your first week of, of signing on. And one of the reasons I say that is because I, I'm very loyal to, <clears throat> you know, we tell, we tell the people that we hire on from the very beginning, hey, listen, I'm not looking to have a boss employee. I'm looking to have a partnership here where I'm helping you maximize. And we also tell from the very beginning, we, we only hire those that have big dreams and goals. And hey, I, I want to help you reach those in the next three to five years. I'm not expecting you to work here until you're 65 or until this or all this kind of stuff, unless you really truly want to. But I think you have bigger things that you want to do with your life than maybe just, you know, sell software or these different things. And we're very loyal. You know, we don't just, oh, he missed a goal this month, get rid of him, you know? And so we've been very, uh, uh, very loyal. But it is amazing that that is, has not been reciprocated. Uh, but just a few times, um, someone comes in, Hey, you know, I just wanted to give you three days notice. Okay. Well, that's great. You haven't hit goal in six months. We're keep, we keep working with you. We keep investing in you and you're going to give me three days notice, <laughs> you know? So, uh, um, yeah, it's, and, and it's, it's, it then makes it as, as the business owner kind of can, can make you harden up a little bit and, and, uh, uh, you know, not be, you know, as lenient or not want to be as loyal. So I appreciate a book like this because I don't know one that takes this angle. And this is very important because if you leave wrong, you really just did burn bridges. And most times they're fantastic bridges that you probably are going to wish you didn't burn, you know? Um, so I told a lot of people there, Hey, if you guys go off and, and, uh, uh, some of them want to get started in real estate and some kind of stuff like, Hey, I want, I want to be an investor. I want to help out with some of this kind of stuff. You can't do that by you know, bur burning the, this relationship, this bridge. So anyway, long story short, I appreciate a book that's written at, at this angle. And, uh, with that being said, <laughs> next question, if the reader could only take away one action item or principle or concept out of your entire book, everything that you just shared with us, what would you want that to be? Yeah. Um, so resignation is negotiation, right? Um, so just like you try to, get her, if you're buying a house, you, you try to get a better deal by using certain tactics. And, um, if one of those tactics is being very nice to the, the party that, that you're, you're, um, you're trying to buy the house from, and that gets you a couple percentage points off. That's a, that's a massive financial gain. Well, if by being very nice to all of your, your coworkers and your boss and by staying calm and making experience about um, getting the outcome that, that you have set for yourself. Um, and by, by just sticking to that, you will, you'll just get a much better outcome. Just don't have a, a breakdown. Don't reach your breaking point. Um, I, I, th there was this horror story in, in consulting about um, somebody just screaming at everybody, cursing everybody out, crying, breaking down. And we, we all felt really bad, but I, it, it must have destroyed her career connections. It, many of us work in very small industries. So if, if 
you leave one company, chances are that the people from that company are going to move on. So five years from now, 10 years from now, you never know who's going to be at the, the company you want to work for, who might be an investor, who might be at a client. So just don't burn those bridges. Be rational. Be calm. That's really the, the core message um, that, that I hope the user takes away, the reader takes away. Excellent. Do you have a favorite quote from your book? Um, personally, I, I, I just really love the, the slow breakup metaphor. Um, so uh, have you ever noticed the behavior of a coworker during the few weeks before he or she gives notice? Their desk gradually becomes bare. Personal items begin to disappear as if by magic. Um, and, and, and I just love how the, the, the sort of slow breakup metaphor just personifies itself over the next couple of pages. Um, <laughs> It, it, it's just something that, that always puts a smile on my face. So it, quitting is a uh, serious topic, but we, we try to, to lighten it up. Um, so there, there are a bunch of comic strips in there to, to make the readers smile. Um, there, there are a couple of like jokes and metaphors. Um, so we, we try to, to give a, a very serious topic that, that I think a, a lot of people need, but we, we try to make it a, a little lighter. So Steve, I believe your book is really going to enlighten people to look at, you know, that resignation in a completely different light. And that, that, that brings us to our very last question, which is what's a, what's a book that you can recommend to our audience that has had a huge impact and maybe even created some paradigm shifts for you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I'll, I'll answer this with, with a brief anecdote. So at Google, um, there are two multi-day classes that Google, regardless of your job function, suggests you do. Um, one is a class on negotiation based on the book Getting More by Stuart Diamond. Uh, it's just excellent. Please read it. And the other is a three-day meditation retreat called Search Inside Yourself by uh, Chang Meng Tan, uh, who's Singaporean um, and uh, an amazing author. And these books are so incredible and so valuable to you as, as, and your emotional intelligence that uh, Google um, has decided that it's, it's worth you not going to work for a number of days to just study this stuff. Um, so if that's not a good endorsement, I, I, I don't know what it is, but these two books are just incredible. So I, please buy the art of resignation, then getting more then search inside yourself. <laughs> Perfect. So that's excellent. Neither one of those books has been recommended before. And like you said, yeah, if it's Google recommended, that that definitely has some, uh, not that because it was Steve Finer recommended that that, that wasn't enough, but uh, it being Google recommended uh, might add a little bit of, might add the chair to the top. But Steve, before I we depart, so. yeah, absolutely. Can you recommend the best way for our listeners to get more information on you and your book, The Art of Resignation? Sure. So first off, the book is available via Amazon Kindle uh, right now. So the book is called Art of Resignation, Quit Without Burning Bridges. Um, so just search for it on Amazon, um, or I, I guess it'll be in the notes for, for this podcast as well. Um, on, on me personally, uh, you can reach me at steve at artofresignation.com. We love to talk to, to everyone to help out with problems. Um, we, we've actually done a, a bit of consulting on the side to, to help people think through their resignations. Um, and then you can read about all my, my, my thoughts and latest ideas on, on resignation through, through our blog at artofresignation.com slash blog. Perfect. Well, Stephen, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your book with us. It's been, it's been a pleasure, Wade. Thank you so much for having me. I, I really appreciate it. Thanks again for joining us on the EL. If you'd like more information on Stephen or his book, the Art of Resignation, just check out the show notes at the elpodcast.com. Looking for your next book idea? Head over to the elpodcast.com, where Wade shares his amazing resource, the top 10 business books recommended by over 500 entrepreneurs with you for free. That's the elpodcast.com. Till the next time, keep it on the EL.